Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. Um, very, very simple vlog today, no opening, no quotes. Uh, I'm here to talk about what's happened the past week since my last video, and um, this is not any type of political or social commentary or open for debate or anything. I just want to kind of state the facts of what's happened to me and my family for the past week, how it's affected my business, and um, kind of talk about this is what happens in life sometimes. We can make all the best plans and something comes out of left field and we have to be able to just roll with the punches and continue on. I'll let it completely take us out of the game. So when I signed off on my last video, you know I had been talking about making, uh, trying to make three videos a week. Every time I was gonna be in the garage office, I was gonna be filming what I was doing that day. And I wanted to start the journey to $100,000 in gross sales in 2021. Well, from the moment I uploaded that video, uh, things really did take a turn. My dad, who I mentioned in that video, lives with us, he's gonna be 85 in April had been feeling a little bit sick and um, it ended up being a, a standard infection. He's pretty much prone to those, um, but we ended up having to call the ambulance. He had to go to the ER. He is actually in rehab now, so he hasn't been home since last Tuesday, which was kind of a blessing in disguise because the next day, Wednesday, after the video was uploaded, I ended up developing a cough and I couldn't sleep that night and the next day I just was achy and coughing and had a migraine and I'm prone to migraines. It didn't feel like just a migraine but I just felt awful and said I'm just gonna lay down today. Um, and then Friday morning I was already feeling better. The cough was kind of almost not there and um, I wasn't as achy, just tired. And the girlfriend said you know just to be on the safe side you should go get a test and see if it comes back positive for COVID. And so I went to the drive through test and got the results back two days later and it did say positive, but at that point, I was already feeling worlds better. In fact, probably since this is, I'm filming this on Thursday morning, so probably since Sunday morning, I've really only been dealing with fatigue and lack of energy, which I hear is a common thing um, with this, but honestly, flu-like symptoms lasted maybe two, two and a half days, no problems breathing, um, the girlfriend got it too. Obviously, we're you know in close proximity to each other. So thankfully, my dad wasn't here. Uh, he's safe in the hospital at least for another week or so. Um, but yeah, today is the first day. Honestly, uh, this is not again. This is not a political statement. But if there was no knowledge of this existing, I would just have felt like I just got done going through a, a typical flu. In fact, probably even a, a mild flu compared to the ones I've had in the past. And I'm not discounting anybody watching this who either has suffered from this worse or has a loved one or a friend who has because I have friends who have been a little more devastated by this than um, my family has. But anyway, uh, it is what it is. It basically made me stop uh, working for a week. Um, and I wanted to work. I just did not have the energy and the drive. Today is the first day I really feel like doing something. Um, probably more I'm anxious from sitting around. Sales did continue to still trickle through. Um, very small. Just And I said in the last video too, I knew this was going to happen either way because I hadn't been doing a lot since the middle of December. And I always find when you slow down your efforts on listing and sourcing, you don't see the effects immediately, but you do see them down the road. So um, if I were to be able to work hard the next week or two, I should technically be non-contagious or not contagious anymore by this weekend. Um, if I have the energy, probably late next week, I'll start sourcing again. Um, if I work hard now, I should be feeling the benefits from it by the end of quarter one. So as far as any adjustments I made to the business, um, when I was sick, I immediately changed my handling time on my stores to five days just to give myself the breathing room in case I couldn't get to the post office. Or once I found out that the test was positive, I um, had asked a friend to make post office deliveries for me. And because I don't want to have to worry, just in case they can't go out of their way for me, that it affects my late shipping, I wanted to have that buffer for uh, delivery time and shipping time on my uh, my sales. So uh, I did still get most of this stuff out because of their help. And I had a good friend to help uh, re by returning stuff to Goodwill for me that needed to get back in the return period for store credit. So I didn't lose out on that. Um, but the sales in general, I think I maybe sold like six or seven things since um, almost the past week. So it's been, it actually it has been my worst sales week in the past three years. 
Um, but in a way, I'm kind of glad because if I had to do a whole lot of shipping, I'm not sure if I could have gotten through all the packing and everything. So um, that's one thing I would suggest is if you ever feel like you're going to have any chance of missing shipping windows because of sickness or anything else, um, up your handling time at least to like two or three days to give yourself that buffer. Um, and if you can get out, obviously, earlier, just mail it like you normally would. And when it came to packing, um, I wore gloves, I sanitized everything, uh, wore a mask. I mean, just, I don't, I know it's not supposed to transmit over packages and things like that, but I just don't want to have the knowledge that maybe I could have possibly affected somebody else with it. So I figured to take all the precautions I, I can. For today, uh, I want to go over just some sales from the past 30 days. I didn't really make a what sold video in any recent time period. And um, I always say with my videos, you could watch videos from six months or a year ago because whatever I'm selling then, I'm pretty much still selling the same stuff today. Um, that's one of the things about reselling. Sometimes it gets a little bit dull because you just go with your items that sell consistently and um, it's the same thing over and over. So I'm going to try and blow through these pretty quickly. I am going to say you're going to see a lot of Christmas stuff. And uh, with Christmas stuff, I list it all year long. People sometimes like to wait till the holiday season to list it and take it down till next season. I'm telling you, as a Christmas nut, we buy this stuff at full price all year long. Um, quite a few of these ornaments you're going to see I sold after Christmas for a really good chunk of change. This one, this Hallmark 2005 Santa Nose Talking Ornament, kind of cool. You push that button on the front and the lights randomly pick, naughty, nice, or not sure. And he has maybe like 20 different sayings depending on what it lands on. Paid $5 for this. Um, this sold within, I think, a week of me listing it right before Christmas. I think it sold on the 14th uh, for $54.95. So, um, and, you know, I put batteries in to test it and make sure it did work uh, just because you don't want to sell something for that much and not know for sure with the customer that it's working. That's why I like to put a little picture of the light um, on there as well. And I think I did, I think I included the batteries because I had a bunch of those little watch batteries around. Here's another one, Hallmark 1986 uh, Christmas Candy Shop. This is one of two Nostalgic Shop series ornaments that I sold. You'll see the next one right here is just loose without the box. That was the toy shop. The one in the box went for $29 plus $5 shipping. Kind of cool. The box was a little bit uh, dented, but um, I think they're buying it for the ornament more than anything else. So this is the kind of ones I look for. That and pop culture and Disney character ones. A lot of the more generic things like just the animals and the squirrels and the Santas. Um, unless they have something kind of kitschy or something unique like this talking Santa one. Um, dates seem to sit. I have Santa one sitting from well over uh, two Christmases ago still that I'm probably just going to lot up and get rid of. But then we have a unique Santa one like this, which was an animated 1996 North Pole volunteer Santa fireman. And I will tell you something. Here's <clears throat> here's a tip for today's video. A lot of light sets nowadays, especially the LEDs, they will not take that plug um, on the unit. They will not fit there. They have their own custom shape. And I had to actually grab an old, old set of lights uh, to test this out. And they weren't even the right kind, but I managed to get the wires connected. And this worked just fine. He animated, the levers moved, and the bells rang and such. So uh, $29.95. These are the kind of things I, I look for. And off the top of my head, because I'm not looking this up in my database right now, uh, I think I paid $2.99 for this one. Goodwill had brought out a giant plastic bin of a bunch of ornaments. Uh, for two ninety nine or less, one of my last shopping trips be, uh, before the end of the year last year, and uh, I grabbed quite a few that still aren't even listed yet. This is something else holiday uh, decoration wise that I've been selling quite a bit of these Wee Crafts, or also the brand is Accent Unlimited. These are those little paintable figures. I think they sold these a lot at Michaels, or they still do. Sometimes they come in a box. Sometimes they come in little shrink wrap packages. Uh, I've been finding a lot of them, and my Goodwills generally price them super cheap. I picked up a box for $4 that had three different sets in it. And this was one of the sets that sold for $35. Um, I definitely suggest when you do these, you double pack them. I wrapped each one of these up in bubble wrap and then I wrapped them two at a time in bigger bubble wrap. I made sure that box was not going to move um, at all on the inside while during shipping. Uh, and these are the other ones too. These were uh, country villagers, little figurines. I, I honestly should have taken, this is a very lazy picture of me. I've taken this on the picture on the back of a like a silk screening mat that I had lying around. These should have been on a black background, but they still managed to sell within a couple of days of being listed. 
So uh, all these paintable figures, I don't even include the paints. I just have the instructions, if even that, and the figures. And they've all been selling somewhere for a total of $35 to $50 for a set. Um, I have other ones too, but these are the two most recent ones that sold. Again, I was in for $4 for three sets, and two of them sold for just about $70 total. I don't do a whole lot of plush or figurines. Um, not so much of like a health and sanitary reason, just because I hate to pack and ship them. And uh, here's a Universal Studios Harry Potter Wizarding World Adobe. Uh, is it Dobby or Dobby, isn't it? It's Dobby, a 15-inch doll. He was a little bit awkward to pack. He was kind of posable, so he could bend a little bit. But I bought him the same day I bought that uh, Santa Nose ornament for $5 as well. And he flipped for $49 in just about two weeks. So that's not bad. Between that, Those are the only two purchases I made in that store, the Santa ornament and Dobby here. So $10 flipped into... Let's just call that 50 plus, 50. so $105 in total sales on a $10 investment. That's not bad at all. I want to throw in something random that I grabbed, um, not knowing why, and these sold within a day of being listed. These are vintage Hamilton Pinnacle playing cards, uh, two packs. They're new and sealed, unused. We got a couple of uh, terrier dogs on the front. I paid 99 cents. I just threw 99 cents at this. Um, and I figure, you know, it might sit for a bit. The box was obviously wrecked, uh, but... They're cute, especially something like a dog on them or an animal for animal lovers or collectors. Um, this is the kind of thing they go for. And sure enough, that sold for $15 plus $3.25 shipping. And like I said, that sold within a day of me listing it. I wasn't actually expecting that. But these are the kind of little random small items I look to pick up while I'm also picking up the big items. Because there is an extra, that's about 12 13 bucks profit after a very, very minimal amount of work. On the same shopping trip, when I'm picking up something like this Toshiba DVR 620KU DVD VCR dubbing and duplication recorder. That's a mouthful. Um, I got to make a better title than that in the future. But as always, I'm always, always, always selling combo units. And this is one of the ones we especially like to look for. Because I always like to point out, if you find a unit like this that has that dubbing button there in the middle, or it says something like dupe or direct copy, um, these are the ones that will do a direct copy either from the VCR to a DVD or vice versa or both. And those are the ones that sell for serious money. And people always say, well, if I don't have the remote control, what do I do? Um, I actually happened to find this remote control on a, in a different store on the same shopping trip and it worked with this unit. So I included it. Otherwise, I probably would have sold this one for maybe instead of 160, I would have asked like 130. Um, I don't mind selling about the remote control. Uh, people still buy them. They can use universal remote control as well. But this one sold for $160 plus $25 shipping. And my shipping on all of these VCRs is by FedEx Home Delivery. I have never had a pricing problem with FedEx. Their quotes have always been spot on for me. And I'm in Nevada. So even if this had to go all the way across country to like Florida or Delaware or New Jersey, I'm probably paying no more than $17 shipping it in a 20 by 12 by 6 box. So again, there's no real rhyme or reason to the items I'm showing in today's video. I just wanted to get back on the video train and show a few things. But I tried to pick out a couple of the items from the last few weeks that were just different or that I think are kind of cool that you can actually sell them. And these three items, which are going to be identical as far as what they are, these are those stylus pens from those larger LeapFrog, LeapPad game systems. Generally, those are not worth selling in my experience, uh, mainly due because of the size. You have to send them at least priority mail. You want to test them and everything. But I discovered almost by a fluke last year that you can take the styluses, styli, styluses out of the units and they sell pretty darn quick. I'm not joking. They sell usually about $15 to $17 a piece. And these are all ones that I listed probably about a week ago. Um, actually, it's, let's say two weeks now because I've lost the last week. So um, all of these sold pretty darn quick. So when I can find those leapfrog leap pads for a buck or two, I just grab them because if I pull the stylus out, there's going to be an easy $10 in my pocket. And again, those are the kind of things I try and grab those as much as I try and grab the bigger items as well, because that is extremely easy to just take a couple of pictures of, list, and pack it up in a bubble mailer, ships for under four ounces. That's just like picking up $10 bills off the ground all day. So there's another little silly 
uh, bolo item you could maybe possibly look out for as well while you're shopping. All right, guys, it's actually going to do it for today's video. Um, <laughs> got the quarantine hair still going on. Uh, thanks for watching. I appreciate it, guys. If you enjoy the content and want to support the channel, please make sure you click the subscribe button down below. And if you even got a kick out of today's video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. It's like positive feedback for resellers. That's how we get that positive feedback on YouTube. So I talk to you next time, guys. Stay safe and stay healthy. Stay tuned, stay positive, and keep hustling. Talk to you later.